Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I'm going to show you step by step how you can create for yourself at home. And I really mean that. You can make this for yourself at home. This gorgeous yellow dandelion with a ladybug. Every part of this process is broken down. I tell you every tool I use. I demonstrate every technique. The techniques are super achievable. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is here to make sure that the camera is pointing at these wonderful aforementioned techniques and things that I'm doing so that you can really see it. Because what we found in our years teaching on YouTube is that if you can really see clearly what's happening, you can duplicate that yourself at home. Now, there's a ton of resources with me, so be sure and check the description. I don't just word stuff down there for keyword or surfacing or any of that. Those links, everything that's down there actually have a purpose. There's a link to a free traceable. So if you're like, I like to paint, but I'm not ready to draw. I've got that. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to be anything to get the traceable. Um, there's the materials listed down there. So if you need a quick look to see what I used. Um, and so that's really, really good. There's uh, lots of extra resources. If you're here for the premiere and you want to ask questions, what you do is you just put your question in the live chat, all in caps. And the people with the wrenches, those are moderators. Those are not actually art cops on my channel. Those are hosts. They're guides. They are people who've been painting with me a really, really long time. And they kind of know what the 2,500 lessons are. So if you have a question of like, well, how would I do this? Somebody in there is going to be like, oh, there's a class for that and share the link with you. Or if you have an art question or you have an art concern and you just, you know, are unsure. And I really want to encourage you to chat, like watch this through chat with everybody. If you get that chance, um, because you're going to get a lot of connection and a lot of support emotionally. I think that's one of the really special things about what we do is a tremendously supportive community. Now, there's really nothing else to do besides check that description so you know all the stuff that you need to know. Get your paint and your brushes and everything together and come back and meet me at this easel right now because we're going to literally paint this together. So the materials for today's show are 9 by 12 canvas. Now I'm painting on the Art Alternatives Classic Cotton and I really like this canvas a lot. It's a really good um, canvas and it's kind of economical so it's just one of my favorites. I've got Mars Black, Thalo Green, Burn Sienna, Cad Yellow Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Red Medium, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Titanium White, and this Milky Gloop very technical term over here, John. Milky Gloop over gloop, here gloop. is the Satin Glazing Liquid by Golden Artist Colors. And I don't recommend a different product than this by another brand under a similar name because usually when a company calls something a glaze, it's not a slow drying extender, it's a glaze. But this is both a glaze and slows down drying time. It's a two-in-one product, that's why I like it. You don't strictly have to have it for this lesson, but it does make my work just a little bit easier on creating shadows and doing some fun things. All right. Do you think Nothing you're ready? to do. We've got to step, step one. one. Step one. I'm going to do the easiest step one ever. I'm going to paint the whole canvas blue. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Whole canvas blue. But I'm going to do a mix of ultramarine and phthalo blue. I'm using a oval mop just because I think it's going to give me an easy time getting the whole canvas. And just paint the whole thing with this blue color. A half mix between phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. They kind of just make each other into a neutral blue. This is technically kind of like an acrylic ground, which is just a fancy way of, I painted the whole canvas a color to start. Acrylic ground. Or, I painted the whole canvas a color to start. Both work. Same thing. like to make sure that I give them the correcting art terms, John. Just so they got them in their back pocket. Just to pull out, just in case they need them. Yep. A thing I can do if my canvas is dry and thirsty is I can take a mister and I can mist my canvas and that will actually help the paint go further. You seen this? Oh yeah. Yeah. It sometimes will help the paint go further. You can do the sides if you want to. 
You can paint the sides if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, what it technically is, is you just want to make sure you get around the edges of the canvas enough so if you frame it, there's no white showing. Everything after that is really your prerogative. Every time I say your prerogative, I just can't help but think of Janet. <laughs> just There's just no way. Like, it's my prerogative to paint the sides of this canvas or not. It's all up to you. Ooh, I'm all spitting vinegar today. I'm just working this into the canvas. And I'm doing this because acrylic loves to stick to acrylic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's its favorite. And I'm just working it in and just making sure all the white has been painted blue. This will be the easiest, funnest layer. <laughs> um, don't worry if your layer is streaky or imperfect. And that's really because we're going to be painting a whole background over that. And that background comes in in a couple layers. So there's going to be a lot of coverage on this canvas. Mm -hmm. So this first one is just to create depth and get rid of the white. So that we have a rich surface to work from. A rich surface. But we have to dry it. Okay. So I'm going to dry that, and you dry yours. When we come back, I'll show you what the next step is. So I'm going to first, with my mind's eye, mentally divide the canvas into its halfway point here and its halfway point here. Now, when I lay out my flower, I'm actually going to sketch those in. But right now, it's just a general approximation of halfway, right? And so at this halfway point, I want to come up a little bit above halfway, for my next part and I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'm going to mix phthalo green and burnt sienna together. Let's come across here. That's got a cool super dark greeniness. It's got a cool super dark greeniness and this is all I'm doing. I'm just come through here kind of just paint this all the way down with the burnt sienna and phthalo green. It doesn't need to be particularly in focus or anything else. We're just making this is the this is the field that our dandelion lives in. It's its home. This is also it can be streaky, can be kind of an interesting layer, so I don't want you to feel a lot of pressure with it. So it's it's there's no no emotional pressure and no brush pressure. No emotional pressure. No emotional pressure. And the brush pressure is fairly light as well. Taking a deep breath, remembering to relax. Sometimes when we're painting, we can put a lot of expectations and pressure on ourselves to like learn a new skill or be great at something the first time we try it. Instead of putting all of our focus and attention to having fun and seeing like enjoying basic things like how the brush feels going across the canvas. Now I'm going to rinse out. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I'd like to rinse out and I have my, I have one of those buckets that's divided into three. It's a multi-rinse. It's a multi-rinse and the reason I have a multi-rinse is because it keeps my water cleaner. You can also just have a couple of water buckets or you know a couple of places so that you have one where you do most of your paint and then the others offload you know, that paint between the next steps I'll, I'll adjust over normally you've got a piece of uh paper towel there that you'll brush off on yeah i gotta put that in there anyways now that you pointed it out to me and i have to find those so that'll be something we do we'll that between during the next, the next step yeah. all right so this is this step and i'm gonna want to dry it before i do the next step so that ended up being perfect timing <laughs> mm -hmm. i was like i just thought do you know what i'm doing I, are I, you reading my mind i've been here a minute Maybe you've seen a couple paintings get done. I've seen. I, I, I kind of. I get the flow now. Get the flow now. <laughs> I totally believe that's true. Okay, so let's dry this thoroughly, and come back. I'm going to show you how to do the gradation on this guy. Now, in this step, I'm going to use my glazing medium a little bit because I want to slow down the drying time of my paint. Um, that's just because I'm working in really dry conditions in the studio. I've been running um, uh, heat because it's cold. And that can really pull the moisture out of the air. So I'm loading up a little bit of glazing liquid and a little bit of the blue mix, which again is just half ultramarine, half thalo. But let's come in here and get some white involved. 
Let's get the white involved in it. We're going to come here and go above. We're just going to make a nice light blue sky. Just paint that over the blue. And come in with a little more blue in my white up here. Just a little more. It doesn't have to be strongly more. Just a little bit more blue if I want and blend down into my lighter sky. And then back up, just making a nice, soft, subtle, dis dis distant kind of sky. If you feel like you've lost your light, all you do is just come back in with a little glazing medium and your white again. Just kind of work that down there. I'm blending back and forth, which is looking pretty darn good. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And I'm going to call this a step, but I'm not going to worry about drying it because I don't mind if there's a little blending between the sky and the grass now. So I rinse out seems my brush reasonable. and... Hmm? Seems reasonable. Does it seem reasonable? I don't seem unreasonable. Yeah. I'm an unreasonable painter. I would laugh at that, except I have met unreasonable painters and I know they exist. Because <laughs> every type of human exists in every type of community. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my phthalo green mixture. So this is my phthalo green and my burnt sienna and my cad yellow. I'm going to come in here and make a slightly brighter, brighter green. I've got my glazing medium on here. And it's all right if I kind of go blending in into this distant background so it's just a little bit soft. Just a little bit soft. And then back and forth with this green. Which again is a little bit of the yellow, little burnt sienna, little phthalo green. Maybe a little more phthalo green. If it's too green gold, you just add a little more phthalo green. Thalo green is what's called a convenience color because you can mix green from blue and yellow. It is convenient. But it does make it much more convenient. So this is my field under bright light. These are bright lighting conditions, right? The sun is shining. Everything is good. And it'll give me enough contrast to be able to paint the underside of my flower and the dark stem that's holding it up. And I blend it forward. And then I blend it back. And again, because I painted everything ahead of time, what is nice is now my canvas has a real depth to it. It's jemmy. It is jemmy. And that's what I was looking for. And I get all that in to get that nice background. Now, if I have an area that, like, seems uneven or needs a little work because I have the glazing medium in it, I can pretty easily come back and do something with it. And I'm going to actually pull down because I don't want a streak back there. There we go. It's just the distance. We're chucking the distance. All right. So now we have sky and ground. The two zones that our art exists in. Those are important things to have if you're going to exist someplace. It really helps. <laughs> <laughs> it really helps. Uh, otherwise, you're just a free-floating, trans-conscious, floating flower. You could, you could, maybe you're living on a gas giant like Saturn and just floating in an endless sky. And like, I am transcendent. <laughs> I am the dandelion. But no, this dandelion is grounded. Hmm. Right? This dandelion is on the ground. It's roots and, in the earth. It's <laughs> roots in the earth. That's where this dandelion is grounded. So we've given it some ground to be grounded so it's not just free floating. It's not, 
it's not it's consciousness is not raised it's not about to become one with the universe hmm. or maybe it is i don't really know the inner life of dandelions that well it's, it's true it's true they're a diverse flower they really are maybe maybe they are all like much deeper than i realize <laughs> It's a lot of thought around a Danny Lane. We'll find out next step more. But next step needs to have a dry surface regardless. <laughs> this surface needs to be dry for anything else we're doing to work. So dry it thoroughly. Thoroughly. <laughs> now I'm going to get some tools involved. Right? I'm going to get a tool called a T-square. It's pretty easy to understand. It's shaped like a T and it helps you draw straight lines. And I'm going to measure my canvas in half both ways and then create horizontal and vertical lines. So across the horizontal, the halfway point is six inches. And then I'm going to want to come here and make a line vertically. If you're wondering what cool handy dandy tool I have in my hand, I will explain, and then I'll have some things to say about it. Okay, so I'm going to measure from the top to 9 inches at a halfway point, which in, uh, if you're doing inches, is 4.5 inches, and if you're doing centimeters, is between 11 and 12. <laughs> that's, that's as much centimeter work as, as you're going to get, you know, from me. I do them a little bit, but I'm not saying I understand them deeply. Now, this tool, this really cute, adorable tool, is actually uh, not traditionally an art tool. This is a tailor's chalk tool. Um, it's the one by Dritz, and you can get it at Joann's and sometimes online. Um, it shouldn't cost a ton of money, so if it if it does, they're price gouging. Well, you know what? Who knows anymore? Just, right? Yeah. You just never know anymore. It's just, just now prices are just made up willy-nilly crazy things. But it didn't used to cost a lot of money, and it shouldn't cost a lot of money. I don't have it at my art store, but I have an art store where you can get this canvas and all this other stuff if you want to. And that's in the description down below. So if you're like, I like this Art Alternatives classic cotton canvas that she's sporting or these paints, you go by there, get the glazing liquid, get these kinds of things, get the T-square, just not the Dritz Talk tool. Now, yeah, right. you know, shameless plug. <laughs> we sell some stuff there. You can check it out. It's cool. This ma this video is sponsored by you and us and our store. And we don't have advertisers, so that's who does our video. Now, I'm going to use this to sort of sketch in the scale of what I'm doing. I'm going to come up from the top. And I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to come over to the side and make a mark. Come down to the bottom and make a mark. And you can see it's like... About an inch, ooh, half inch, there's about an inch here. And I'm going to come over and again make another, like, almost salvage edge, almost quarter of an inch. And I'm going to just very lightly sketch a kind of round oval shape. Just coming through here. This is just to help me when I'm painting the petals. Because otherwise what will happen is my petals will, and I mean will, get away from me. The other thing that I'm going to mark is the point where the petals start to change into the foreshortened directions. So this is sort of how they go if you're like trying to figure out how do I layer them out. And then we're going to come up. The upper part of our flower goes like this. And again, we're not painting a solid football. This is, this is It does look like what we're painting is a big giant football. Probably that would do very well if I just painted a big giant football. <laughs> <laughs> people seem of, to like football. There seems, yeah, there's a bunch of people who would just... Just uh, really, really, really like football. So, mm -hmm. not that there's anything wrong with that. That's completely okay. I just never really got into it. But maybe I should consider painting a football. All right. So, I'm going to come here. And I'm going to kind of loosely say that my ladybug... Because we'll we'll sketch her very, very specifically later. But I want to say that we've got a little head... It's going to be kind of like a little triangle shape. And then a little carapace. Coming back here. Oh, I used a big, you know, collegiate word there. But just basically the hard shell. Come back for her uh, overall shape. 
sort of a little loop. By the way, if drawing gives you anxiety, if you're feeling anxiety in this drawing process, I have a traceable. That's on my website. You just go by my website, sign up for the newsletter. You don't have to. Go by my website, and you should sign up for the newsletter, but it's optional, and you can download and print out a traceable and transfer that onto the canvas. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a free video for that as well. There's pretty much a free video for almost all of it. You have a lot of videos. Ex except for football. So. <laughs> So, so you just, just so I need to make that up. I clearly, I clearly have identified a hole in my content, mm. but this is really all it is. And I don't need to know too much more when I do the legs and everything is when I'll do that. But these lines are what I would call guidelines. They help me understand what space my flower is going to take up in this construct of space. So I put my Dritz talk tool to the side and we're going to say this was a step. That's the step. Are you ready so for the step. next step then? Yes, I'm ready for the next step. All right, step six. Ooh, that's going to be wonderful. So I'm going to use a fun brush. They're all fun brushes. But I'm going to use a number eight Isabe Isacryl Filbert. What does a filbert mean? It means the brush has a rounded edge. So it's thin on both sides, and it's got this rounded shape. If you don't have this, you can just use a round. I'm going to go ahead and get a little water on here. Get my green and brown together and then I'm I'm going to, I'm going to do something just wild. I'm going to put some black in it. And I'm going to come underneath. And paint a stem coming up. And maybe just a few lines under here to sort of speak about leaves and a little bit of structure. You can see I'm pulling out little strokes from the center here and zipping them up. Going zip, zip, zip. We're not going to see the whole leaf, so you're just painting something that's just going to be a little bit implied and barely, barely visible for what you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and get that wet. And come over here, make a little curve line. Go ahead and just hit a little zips. You can see just going in from that center line and flicking the brush out. So we've got quite a lot of contrast in this shaded area below the flower. And that's kind of what we're going to say about the background. Now, before I do anything else, for sure, I'm going to want to dry the entire canvas because I don't want this color to get involved in anything I do next. So I'll see you in a second with my canvas dry. You dry yours, and we'll meet back here in just a few minutes for a rendezvous. Now, experience... Lots and lots of experience tells me that yellow is a fairly transparent color. And it's very hard to go over dark color with a light color. And you might think, well, why don't you just paint it yellow? Because it's fussy and delicate and we'd spend all day at it. So the workaround is to get a little bit of white and lay in the flower first. So I'm going to get my little filbert brush and load it up with white. Maybe even a little glazing medium because it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to give myself a little petal. And the petal's going to curve like this. And then there's going to be another little one, and it might curve like that. And they're all heading towards this center point. See how they're going? Some can be longer. Dandelions are like notoriously messy, fun little flowers. So I actually really enjoy this part. It's a nice part. It's just a nice beginning of a flower, isn't it? Yeah. Let's come down here and maybe this one is got a little bit of a flick out at the end. Didn't mean to almost say flicka, but it sounded like I said flicka. Flicka, flicka, flicka. There we go.
This is also like when you're painting really anything. I have a, a really good lesson with tulips and a windmill. Mm -hmm. And we paint the areas where the light colors are uh, first with white. And it really makes a big difference. The other thing is, is if you're painting a different paint than mine, right? A different brand or quality of paint. This white technique will allow you to still have success with what you're doing. And if ever you've been painting your paint and you've been like, man, I can't cover this canvas no matter what I do, this is the workaround for that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll give a couple little thin ones here. They're sort of facing on the edge. I like to think of these as fun funfetti flowers. I think they are. They're one of my favorites. They really are awesome. Can you believe some people consider them a weed? They're such a useful plant. So useful and so pretty, and I don't think weed like at all. No. But it's okay if you think they are. It would not be okay if you were pro fire ant, but it's completely okay if you are, are not like a fan of dandelions. Mm. I have strong fire ant opinions. As I come up, you can see I change the directionality of those petals. Ooh. They start to arc up. Getting complex there. Yeah. Now, we're going to have a bunch that are in the middle, and they're going to be, like, layered in like this. But we don't have to worry about those, really, at this point. Now, as we're coming up here, the lines will become... Um, well, just a little finer and thinner. And shorter. Because there's that top center that's a little bit sort of shorter petaled. So there's long exterior petals in the skirt. Mm. And then as it comes up through the main part of the flower, they become longer. There we go. Just putting some little ones there. Just giving ourselves a little dandelion room. Now I don't need to do anything where I have my bug. Except to paint around it. All right. Look at that. Just the beginnings of a dandelion flower. Yeah, just poof the first layer. Poofed. The poof to poof to poofed. But not a puff, not a dandelion puff. I have a lot of dandelion puff lessons as well. Yes, this is lots. pre stage. Yeah, and if you like this, there's a really cute one with uh that's a sixteen by twenty with big bees and um and a ladybug and a dandelion. So um done in kind of a similar manner. So it'd be nice sister painting to this if you were like had a dandelion kitchen or something these would be really fun ones for you to do all right let's try this thoroughly and when we come back i'm going to show you what you do next so i'm going to paint this in layers that i might do scales or um hair where i'm painting the lowest layer and then building up building up building up but before i do that now that everything is dry i'm going to take a little bit of a damp brush and remove my chalk lines And this just takes those chalk lines off. I'm going to leave the ones that define my ladybug because those are still useful, but the rest of them have got to go. These chalk lines can't define that ladybug. <laughs> they don't define a ladybug anymore. <laughs> I'm going to pull a little bit of yellow to the side, and I'm going to grab a little bit of brown. I'm kind of going to mix up a yellow-brown. Still pretty yellow. Let's get some glazing liquid into it. But I want a slightly darker value than what the center flower is going to have. We're going to come back with highlights later, but right now I want this. So I'm going to carefully go over what I've already painted. each individual petal. So 
So there's a little bit of going where we have gone before. <laughs> sort of like the opposite of Star Trek. Going where you exactly have gone before. <laughs> Visiting familiar places. <laughs> there we go. Doing really well there. And you might wonder, with the brown, was that even still necessary to do the white underneath? Yeah, because brown is also a transparent color. Sometimes what you don't know as a new painter is things like paints have transparency. Uh, they have light fastness. There are these little elements that can really impact the end result of your painting. But what is absolutely um, going to pull this together is the value changes between the low petals and the and the more in the sun petals. How you feeling, babe? Good. I like I like the uh, the those um, light difference. You know, when you see when you can see the light playing across the flowers. Yeah. I mean, even though we're doing it in a more simplistic way, we can still play with those concepts. I have like. If you want more light lessons and you'd like to paint for many, many hours, I have many, many classes that we get deep into realism and deep into light. But what we're going to do is practice those skills here and make something gorgeous we can hang on our wall without, you know, having to spend 10 hours doing it. And you're like, 10 hours was an option? It could be. Could be. Could be. Just going like this, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. And the white really makes that help, helps make it pop like that, yeah. It really does. Without the white, the yellow would just be powerless against the green. It'd be like, I can't do it. I can't go on. Now I'm going to take a little more brown over to my yellow. And I'll make sure we've got just a bit of a brown gold up here that I'm kind of putting in. This is just to help the petals come into some shadow. Just a little, little, little impasse. You just get that little edge of the... Yeah, we're going to come back with some brighter colors, but I just like to have a slightly warmer center. Just so that when I put the shorter petals, they have a slightly darker color to contrast against. That's nice. Yeah, something fun to do. Now, once that's done, I'm going to want to rinse out my brush thoroughly. Rinse out your brush thoroughly. And we're going to dry everything with our hair dryer. So I'm going to continue on with my filbert. Again, if you missed it from before, this is a number eight Isabi Isacryl brush. Okay, so but the shape that you want is a filbert. I'm going to go ahead and pull a little of my yellow out again. I'm going to grab a little of my white. It's a little bit different than what I have done up into this moment. This is just a lighter, duckier yellow. Go ahead and load right here. I'm going to come around this edge very carefully. Catch these little outer edge flowers that are kind of more in more sunlight. I'm taking him to the brown, but I know I've got some layering to do in here or tiling. So a lot of times the planning is how do I get to the tiling, the way that the petals layer on top of each other in their growth pattern. When you have these sort of types of blooms, chrysanthemum, any of it, it's about getting those layers going. That's something you see a lot in acrylic. It's about the layers. It's about the layers. Ogres and acrylic. It's all about the layers. People, too. 
People have layers. Way more than we think. So we're getting that little bit of brighter yellow out there. And then interestingly enough, I'm going to come through here. And add little pops of this bright ducky yellow, which is just the cad yellow and white. See, so I did a little bit there and then popped another little one there. Yeah, I do. Just on this outer edge. Just a little dimensionality. It's not a big deal. We can handle it. We can be dimensional. Kind of joining up the highlights in these two petals. That looks pretty good. It really does. It, I love how all the, the, the different yellows come together to tell the story of that dimension of the petals. Now I'm adding a lot more yellow into the mix. Now I'm going to come here up in the center. Put a little thick on there. That's kind of nice. Now that may take it a little longer to dry, huh? Well, it can, but we're going to hair dry it, so... But it, like if you're at home, you got to watch that because it might. A little bit longer. Not too much. Acrylic dries pretty fast on you. So you can see there's like a little bit of brown there. If I need to, I can get a little bit of white into the yellow again, but not as much. Just bringing some little petals out. So that this little guy has, he's got some personality. Something attractive so that the ladybug would be like, you, you, I want to come see you. Well, this flower is just naturally attractive to the, to the ladybugs. When you really stop and look at um, flowers like dandelions, it's just amazing amazing in their structure. Now I'm going to come through here and I'm doing just shorter brush strokes. And then I'll come around again just curling in shorter brush strokes. And just through here. Just a little bit of brush stroke all the way around and then voila, so much more. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to my brush and I think I'm going to dry it before I come back and hit it with the next little bit of highlight. So I'm going to get a little of my glazing medium just so that it's not drying on me too fast. A little bit of yellow and a lot more white this time. I'm going to make an even lighter yellow color. Right? So it's even duckier. I'm referring to baby ducklings. If you're like, what's a ducky color? <laughs> Sometimes my brush will get loaded a little bit thick and I will need to wipe out the extra paint. I don't really necessarily want to wash it out, but I might wipe it out. And I'm going to come up here to my petals. And I'm going to just make sure... that I have little highlights. Just to the tips. A 
little highlights, little curves. You're just building up some dimensionality. It really does build that dimension up quickly. I like to do little curves here at the center that are kind of like those are little petals facing us and then back into the center one. Just making sure that our flower seems full. Hmm. Now I'm going to come down and maybe put a few even brighter highlights a couple of places. Just touching the leaves. And I can come through with some yellow and pop a few leaves. Well, these are petals. See how that just pops some of them? It really does. You just tell the story. Painting something that's yellow on yellow can feel intimidating at first. You're like, how do I paint this, this blob that's yellow? It's like how you paint anything else. A rock is how you paint a glass of water is how you paint a wave and the sun is how you paint a tree because the surface is always flat. We're not sculpting. So right. it's just value. That's how light or dark something is. Hue. That's the color that it is. Line. That's the direction that we're painting, right? That's the mark that we're making, you know, texture, form. These are the, these are the things that we're playing with. And we play with these things. I'm going to make sure that I'm painted up close to the beetle. Just to make sure, because we're going to, we're going to put a, put a little shadow around the beetle for sure, but I just want to make sure that we're yellow under the beetle, the ladybug. Ladybugs are a beetle. Add a little more white to that, so kind of coming under there, just to make sure that those have some pops as well. Put a little color a couple places and enjoy it. All right. Now we have a pretty full giant big flower. And it wasn't that stressful and it wasn't that hard. Now I'm going to rinse out this brush and put it to the side. Remember after every painting session, what's the number one thing you're going to do to save lots and lots of money? Wash your brushes with soap and water and dry them flat. Okay. I was like, You're like, I don't know. The, what? I didn't know there was going to be a quiz today. I was, wasn't preparing for a quiz. <laughs> There's a quiz. <laughs> but that's really seriously one of the first places I see artists being able to save a lot of money is that when you're not destroying the tools that you're using, if you don't leave your brushes in water, where the ferrules oh, pop yeah. off and the, and the handles can crack. If you wash them after every session so the paint doesn't dry in them, they're going to last so much longer and you're going to feel so much better about investing in your brushes when you're not destroying them every painting session. So after every painting, no matter how well you rinse them in this bucket, you're still going to take that extra step of washing them with soap and water and drying them flat so they're ready for you for the next time you use them. That's okay, good advice. that said... We're going to dry this thoroughly, 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 and come back and paint the ladybug. Now, because this painting has, uh, you know, an object like a ladybug, which I want a little bit of detail in, I'm going to actually switch to a round brush, because that's going to give me a lot of control. And this is my favorite. This is a number six Raphael sepia. And um, we have these in my store, but you can find these internationally. They're part of the essentials from Raphael. And, and if you're like, Raphael, does anyone have that brush line? They're 250-year-old brush line. So, yeah, a lot of people have that brush line. You might have to go into your local art store. Um, including us. Including <laughs> us. Because we're a real art store, we too. We're a real art store, too, yeah. But we're not international. So, you know, if you're somewhere else, you might want to go to your local art store to find them. Um, and you can get them through there. But any good round with a good point will do. That's my PSA announcement about getting a good brush. I'm going to get this wet. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my Cad Red and my quinacridone magenta and mix them together. 
Now, if you didn't have quinacridone magenta, you only had one red, you could just skip this step, but it does help give your uh, shell, your ladybug shell, a dreamy kind of uh, gemmy look, and I do like that. I'm going to wipe that off, though. What I was doing there was thinning the paint with water and incorporating it through, but I don't need that much paint on my brush. Now I'm going to come up over the side and around. Off a little bit and back. So if you have the traceable, you already have this laid in exactly like I'm doing it right now. But I'm having to imagine this and put this in the way I want it. So for me, this is new and exciting. For you, this is pre-planned and ready for you. <laughs> And that is one of the things I like about it is that you guys get resources like the free traceables that you can download if you're not quite ready yet to freehand. And that's okay. You don't have to be. Nobody said you had to be ready to freehand. Nobody. I'm going to rinse out. And then I'm going to add the black part of the beetle shell. I actually really like painting bugs. Bugs are fun to paint. Bugs are fun to paint. And uh, if you're here for the premiere and you're in the live chat, we have a very special bug in our community, the bug. <laughs> we have a community bug. We have a community bug, and we always like to honor the bug. Here we go. And remember, if you're here in the chat and you're feeling kind of shy, um, go ahead and pop... Pop a question up because those moderators, they're not art cops. They're, they're art guides. Remember, they're here to help, here to help you find resources, here to help you find the video on how to use a traceable, here to just help you deal with, I made like 2,500 free art videos. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really depend on the fabulous work of our volunteers yeah. and our moderators to help you guys locate all those resources. I'm going to add a little cute head here. Kind of getting that little shape in. I'm going to rinse out real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some yellow. And make sure I'm tight to the ladybug. Ah. Doesn't have to be a bright yellow, but you just want it painted all the way to that edge. We're going to be casting a shadow underneath using our glazing medium when we're all done. So I'm just making sure there isn't like a weird light or something you wouldn't expect or wouldn't know about. Like a gap. No gaps. No gaps. Gotta watch those gaps really that important but sometimes it does make a difference to how the painting looks I'm just using this round brush now the thing to watch for is these guys get these water drops on them when you rinse them out and the drop sneaks down the handle and drops on your painting when you least expect it gets you so you gotta watch for that water drop I'm gonna go ahead and come up the center line And off the back there and that is all I'm gonna do and then I want to dry this thoroughly because this this is the architecture that my cute ladybug is built on so we want to dry this really thoroughly when we come back I'll show you the next layers that you put on to bring the cuteness to the cute cute ladybug so for the next part, I'm going to use glazing medium instead of water. You can use water if you don't have glazing medium. I just am going to like the glazing medium, and I'm going to grab my Cad Red, and I'm going to come and kind of glaze this up on my shell. Just deepening that red color. It's just making it redder than red. Bring that down, working that with my round brush, and I can get some just Quin Magenta. I'm going to grab some Glazing Medium, 
sort of come at the front here maybe down this edge with a little bit of that magenta it just gives it a little bit of a deeper red because we can be thoughtful I'm gonna rinse out we can be we can paint a simple painting and still have interesting details that we paid attention to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow into my red. Making kind of an orange. Coming on the back with a little bit of orange. Maybe on the back here with a little bit. Sort of exaggerating, you know, oh, maybe there's a little bit more for sunlight. Rinse out. Rinse it out, rinse out. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of my blue and I'm going to take it to my black. My blue and my black. Grab a little bit of white. I'm going to get a dark blue gray. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to add a little blue gray across the back and add a little bit of blue gray. This will make a difference later. Right now it's helping us even see that there's different little zones on our guy. Beetle zones. Beetle zones. Not beetle juice. No. We only say it one time because we know better. Beetle zone? Don't do it. <laughs> well, I only said. I thought you were talking about Beetlejuice. <laughs> now I'm going to add a little more white to my blue and to the back there. Just a little more here. These are really nice highlight reflections and you will be glad you have them later. I'm going to thin a little bit of the black with my glazing medium or water. Rolling my brush and loading it on the toe. And then we're going to have a little bit of a leg that comes out to the right. It's sort of like thick here at the top. Little joint. And it comes down. And then my very favorite, bug foot. <laughs> little itty bitty hook for a bug foot. Say it with me now. Little itty bitty hook for a bug foot. They got a little hook. Because they're adapted. They do. Good for crawling. Good for crawling. Little bitty hook for a buck foot. And then we'll come up here and say, Whoa, there's a little bug foot right there. We don't necessarily see every bug foot. A little bit of little antennas right there. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. I'm so cute. Now, I'm going to come back to the shell back here, carapace. And I'm going to add, I don't think that's actually the right term. But you know what? The shell. This part of the bug. We do, yeah, we don't we don't teach bug parts here. No, for that you want Lindsay Nicole <laughs> that we know of. You could do Casual Geographic, but you might come away from that needing an adult. <laughs> like help, help! I need an adult. <laughs> Nature films have been ruined forever. It's very good. It's, both are very good, but I I like Lindsay Nicole. Mm -hmm. So if you need more bug facts. And of course, there's the not child appropriate true fox. So, very much like those. I'm going to rinse out. Look at our little bug coming together. Now, I might grab a little black 
and into my kind of red mixture here. Rolling it out, watching for that drop. I'm going to just make sure the edge of my shell, the back of this beetle is nice and sharp. Just to be particular. It's okay to be particular. It's allowed. Put a little more brown over here. Grab some white. Some more white. Get that drop out. Little spot right there. Little spot right there. Little beetle brows. Little dot. Little dot. And we're going to take a little blue and white together. <laughs> Even more white though. Not white white yet. That's the last one we do. Because we do complex reflections over here. Mm. We're ready for it. You can be ready for a complex reflection in your first painting. You really can't. Add a little bit right here. Right there. An the implication of one there. Get a little bit of my brown and white there just to lighten it up. Didn't even rinse out. Clean that up with my black. Just paying attention to the little details is a big deal. And then we're going to say right here, tap, 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 is the beginning of a high shell reflection. Now all of this is pretty cool. All of it is pretty cool. I'm not sad about it, but it could be cooler. I think it's pretty this cool. one out just a little bit more. Add, the, add more layers. Yeah, because we're just about it, you know. A little bit of shine on our legs too. Okay. We're going to dry everything and come back. We're going to finish it up. So now I'm going to want to come through with just my white paint on the toe of my brush. And I'm going to tap a pure white. High shiny spot here. Kind of comes down. little pure white shiny spot in the center of this blue that kind of curves around. Maybe something in the center there. Mm, just a hint here, but a lot more here. I'm adding just a little bit of it. These parts. I can also come in and just maybe make some of the white spot on the beetle brighter, but not all of it. There we go. All right, we're going to call that a step. We don't need to dry anything. We're just going to do a cool trick for the shadow and be all finished. All right, so it's pretty cool, but you notice how it's like almost like floating and I want to anchor this to the flower more 
So what I'm going to do in this step is I'm going to take a little bit of my glazing liquid over to my gray color. Add a little bit of black to it. I'm definitely doing a lot of that. You can do uh, thinned with water if you don't have glazing liquid, but you need to allow it to dry for a really long time if you're going to do that method. And I'm going to come under here, under my be be beetle. And I'm going to go ahead and glaze just a little bit of shadow. Sometimes I like to get my finger and make little swirlies. Not in the cadmium yellow. <laughs> that would not be okay. But, you know, this is my uh, regular paint. And I'm going to wash my hand afterwards. And I go ahead and do some swirlies. This is sort of a blending method. There's still a lot of contrast between the beetle and the flower, but this just gives us the shadow we need. Let's look at it overhead. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to get there. We were just seeing the beetle casting that little shadow, blocking that little light. Not floating now. So when I rinse out here, and I come back with just a little bit of white right here, and along there, then it will pop. A little bit of highlights. I love it. All right. There's nothing to do for this fun, easy flower painting now, but sign it. Signing it, John. That's the, that's the last part. That's the last part. I'm going to take a little bit of my white and yellow over to my blue. I'm going to get some nice sky color. I'm going to come here and just very carefully add my signature. So what I do about signatures is beyond the way that I sign my name is I try to use colors that I use elsewhere in the painting and I try not to sign it in a way that would pull all of the attention to the signature. So I did a lot of work to make this nice painting and I don't need it to all be about the signature. You want enough information for people to know who made it but you still want it to be about the painting. Look at that. Isn't it surprising how that's put together? When we come back, I'm going to tell you what you do next. So you have done a good job. Let's pat yourself on the back for sure. You've completed a painting, which is amazing. I want to remind you that if you'd like to share the painting with me online, that you can share it on social media, but we have a private Facebook group, the Art Trippa Official, that you could join and you can share paintings that you do here online with other new artists. There's like 50,000 of the nice people you've never met that you want to totally know sharing their art in there. And it's just a really great place to come and share your art. I have a Discord channel where you can share. Um, you can also on Instagram, Pinterest, really anywhere there's social media, just tag hashtag at the Art Sherpa or that website that I mentioned earlier, you could email me at support at com and share your paintings. There's a lot of ways to share your art. Um, I also love it if you haven't yet for you to hit that subscribe button because these are fun free lessons and I do this stuff all of the time and you don't want to miss out on any of the fun because sometimes I teach these live, live and you can come to a live chat and chat with me. Um, 
if you'd like to support the kind of work that we do on this channel, I have a Patreon page over on Patreon. And uh, there's lots of cool things like exclusive lessons, um, you know, that you can start out with. There is a Zoom get togethers where we paint in Zoom together, like in person, which is really kind of fun and goofy. We play some games, we do some fun art projects. Those become the patron exclusive lessons that everybody gets to watch. And they're super, super fun. I even have art coaching, licensing, have a lot of stuff. And you can check that out over on Patreon. Um, you can also join, YouTube has a couple memberships here, like Emoji Club and stuff that you can join as well. Uh, so those are really fun things that you can do. I definitely recommend signing up for the newsletter, though, and checking out my store. I think that those are good things to do. And the other thing that you need to do is be really easy with yourself about your painting. The time after your painting is a critical time, and it's easy to be self-critical of your art and be like, mine's not just like hers. Mine's not right. Mine's not perfect. Mine's not this. Mine's not that. And I have to tell you, that is not what art is about. Um, we're not competing with ourselves or other people. We're just having a good time being creative because that's good for us as living beings. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing I really, really want you to do with yourself is be kind to yourself about your painting. And on that note, I want you to be good to yourself, good to each other. And I'll see you at an easel real soon. Bye-bye.